Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going over the method on how to find the determinant of a two by two matrix. So the determinant is a number that we can find for any square matrix. And uh, two by two matrices are the easiest and it's generally, uh, they're really quick to find. So if you have this matrix, let's call it matrix A, and it's a two by two matrix, so it's got four elements, let's say A, B, C, and D. Um, the way that we write the notation for the determinant is like this, you say debt, and then you put in brackets the, the letter that represents the matrix. So this number would be equal to the determinant. Uh, or we can also write it like this with kind of a, a vertical line on each side. This looks very similar to the absolute value bars, but these vertical bars are also used to denote the determinant of a matrix. So if you see these and you know that your, your context is in linear algebra looking for determinants, then this is a, a faster way to write it than writing out debt with uh, brackets here. All right, so the way that we calculate the two by two matrix determinant is we just multiply A times D minus B times C. We basically multiply this diagonal and subtract the, the product of the other diagonal. So we get AD like this minus BC. And that's it, we're just going to get a single number. Um, the determinant of a matrix is not another matrix, it's just a number. And uh, it, you know, it carries some information about the matrix. And like I said, it can be useful with other applications of linear algebra, like finding the inverse and, and stuff like that. So let's do an example here. Let's say that we have matrix A. And if we plug in some values, let's just say we have the values 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then if we want to take the determinant of A, we can write it shorthand like this. And we just have 1 times 4 minus 2 times 3. Okay, and we can simplify that. It is just 4 minus 6, and this is going to be equal to negative 2. Now, the determinant of a matrix like this when the entries are real numbers can be any real number. Uh, so it can be positive, negative, or 0. And uh, if we get 0, what we do is we call that, that's a really special case. That basically means that the matrix is singular. You might hear that going on further into linear algebra. And if you have a singular matrix, it means it's not invertible. So that's only the case if the determinant is equal to 0. But otherwise, um, it can be any real number. So let's do another example here. Let's do matrix B. And let's say for matrix B, let's just switch around the rows here a little bit. So we we'll have 3, 4, 1, 2. All right, so when we go and find the determinant of B, we can use a shorthand way of writing that, and this is just going to be equal to three times two minus four times one. All right, so we're gonna get six minus four, and this is going to give us positive two for that value. All right, let's just run through two other quick ones right here. We got matrix C. Let's just put in some other random numbers just for some practice. We got four, uh, five, and let's do 6 and 10. All right, the uh, determinant of C, we can uh, do this, this is just 4 times 10 minus 5 times 6. So we're going to get 40 minus 30, and the determinant of C is going to be equal to positive 10. So if we have another matrix here, we have 2, 4, and then let's say 4, 8. When we take the determinant of matrix D here, then we're going to get 2 times 8 minus 4 times 4. And uh, that would be 16 minus 16, and that is going to give us a 0. And so like I was saying before, this matrix, we would, be we would call this matrix a singular matrix. And that just means that this is kind of a special case that uh, this other thing called the inverse is that uh, basically it will not be invertible. Um, and another way that you can figure this out is before you even do this calculation, if you see that just one row is a multiple of the other, see the entries in this row are basically just two times the entries in this row. That's an indication that you're going to get zero for your determinant. But otherwise, um, hope that's a good enough introduction with a couple examples. And I will see you guys in the next video where we will find the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix using cofactor expansion.